So Nelson, bro. Nelson is who is he? Because Chavez it, 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 Nelson. It's Chavez he, Nelson. It, it tells it's it seems like you like picked him up in El Salvador and you brought him over here, bro. Like, <laughs> we imported him. You, from did El you Salvador. import him? From no, El actually, we imported him from France. From France. <laughs> <laughs> He's French Salvadorian comedian. Lived in Puerto Rico just recently. Really, this, this guy's story when he tells it to you sounds like a made up movie. Okay, but this guy is. Okay, so we're not going to talk about him. We're here to talk about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jose. Jose, that's right. Jose. H O Z A Y. Where did that come from? So, so, so explain it, because I thought it was just your mom sneezing. No, so in high school, mm -hmm. I, I took French. I, I didn't learn French, uh, but I took French, and uh, I, was a, I was a little bit of a clown in class. No. So <laughs> the teacher would always be like, Jose, Jose, pay attention, Jose. Jose. And so people started calling me Jose. And so when we started doing comedy, you know, Jose V, mm -hmm. and then but there's a lot of Jose's, so I thought I'm gonna make it different and put Jose. Mm -hmm. So I started spelling it H O Z A Y. Okay, because that really stands out. And yeah, yeah. Like, so it's different. <laughs> I went through another <laughs> thing. I started going through Mayan culture. You know, when I'm gonna have a guest, I like to look up where they come from, <laughs> who they are, stuff like that. But I look at your name, I'm like, must be some Mayan fucking background, <laughs> fucking Aztec, something really rooted into his culture that he he's no. named after his great 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 grandfather. No, it's just some fucking name from some. It's French just teacher. a nickname yeah. that. Yeah, it okay. just. Right. I, I like how it looks on uh, on print. <laughs> the H O O. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay, so I've known you for years, Ben. I've known you for many years, many many years. <laughs> But the, the amount of su success that you've gained in just these, man, I say through the pandemic. The pandemic the pan really changed. Is that what up. is that what happened yeah, yeah, with yeah, you? For sure. Because I had time to watch you grow, like literally through the pandemic. So the funny thing is that I've never stopped even creating videos. Mm -hmm. But with TikTok and Instagram, like right during the pandemic, it just blew everything up. Mm -hmm. So like editing videos for me, I've been doing that for the beginning of time. For, for some people that don't know, I'll give you a little bit of background on, on Jose. Um, he is basically the representative ambassador of El Salvador. Like he, he <laughs> very carries the the weight of El Salvador in his shoulders. And the, the pupusa, pupusa, pupusa ambassador, <laughs> and the pupusa ambassador. He he carries that weight in his shoulders, and he's there to to represent. So if if you ever want to know where the best pupusas are, the best Salvadorian restaurants, best cuisine, you can go up to his page and see all that I've stuff. been across the country eating pupusas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then we're going to get into different pupusas because there's the putaco. Pupusa. The putaco is the newest the, thing uh, to to hit the, the Salvadorian culture. <laughs> yeah, dude, you guys get worse and worse. First pupusa, and then we go, oh, okay, we know what that means. And then putaco, oh, and like, oh, shit, you guys are getting worse and worse. You got to get creative with this. It's, it's been crazy. The putaco journey has been something special. Putaco. <laughs> so you were doing comedy okay you were doing comedy i remember that's how we met we, when yeah, was the yeah. first time you went on stage oh man we're talking to 2003 2000 yeah four yeah first first time yes. yeah i started doing comedy how did we meet i don't remember i was drinking a lot back then well, I still drink a lot. I think we met food. during the, your run at the Improv. At the Refried, Refried Fridays, yeah. Refried Fridays. Because that's when I, that, around that time, I was kind of, I met all the other guys. Was I the first one to book you there? You were the first one to book me at the Improv, yeah, for yeah. sure. For yeah, sure. that's yeah. that's the always the the, yeah. uh, the first. Like I always have like the first one. Like all right, for sure. <laughs> yeah, we were doing like the I remember the the Rosewood. Yeah, the Rosewood. Like those little rooms. Yeah, and that's yeah. how I met Carlos and Juan and all those other. How guys. did we meet though? I don't remember how we met. Uh, I do remember my buddies and I had a website with the, and you wore the shirt at the improv. Yes. The, the uh, beanbrothers.com. Bean <laughs> Brothers. That's how we met. You, cause you, you said you had a brand that's called the bean brothers. We, we had started a website, uh, and we were, it was it was videos. So it was like yeah. I think during the YouTube era. What happened to that? What happened to it, the Bean Brothers? It, it, they never it never caught on. See, Pupusa was, was your angle, bro. Pupusa it was viral was like, videos. <laughs> uh, we would just re-upload viral videos, and uh, uh -huh. and uh, yeah, it just never caught on. But I remember uh, I would Juan. I think Juan gave you a shirt. Yeah, and you wore it at the improv, and that was like, dude, he wore the shirt at the improv. We had the Bean Brothers. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so you're doing comedy, you're doing comedy, and then you started doing these backyard gigs with your mom making the pupusas. Yeah, we started the backyard comedy. How did that start? Because this was pre-pandemic. Did, oh, you, yeah, you, you did it way before anybody else did Yeah, it. we were doing the backyard comedy way back when. So it was my buddy Juan, who, who mm-hmm. being brothers, uh, all the ideas come from, <laughs> from him and I. So we were in my mom's backyard one day, and he's like, oh, we should do comedy under the stars because we were trying to figure out, like, shows and uh, – and I was like, comedy under the stars. No one's going to go to comedy under the stars. And uh, so one day my mom was had us put a cement slab in the backyard. My mom's backyard was huge. And the cement slab looked like a stage. And I had forgot about comedy under the stars. And I was telling Juan, oh, this looks like a stage. We should do backyard comedy. He's like, that's what I told you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but you said comedy under the stars. Nobody's going to do that. And so we started backyard comedy. The first show we did, we sold 60 tickets. And I was like, oh, shit, we sold 60 tickets. And uh, I had told my mom, like, oh, we're going to do a show. And she was like, ¿Y qué le va a dar de comer? <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't think about that. I love how the conversation <laughs> went, ¿Y qué le vas a dar comer? Like, your mom's accent came in. <laughs> but so then my dad's like, well, hay que hacer unas pupusas. My parents are so, like, on board with whatever, like, I do. And so we did pupusas. So my mom sold pupusas for a dollar. Mm-hmm. My dad sold beer. <laughs> and shots for a dollar, by yes, the way. Yes, and shots for a dollar. <laughs> Dude, I got to do one of those backyards. Yes, I have a great picture of you, like, sitting in the crowd, like, <laughs> laughing. <Yeah. laughs> just having a good time. <laughs> those shows got wild, though. Those shows, like, would just get bigger and bigger and bigger. It was crazy. I mean, Felipe Esparza went there. Yes, he <laughs> was there the night he won Last Comic Standing. He went to your backyard? Yeah, right right after my god bro yeah. so, so 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 you gotta understand it, it was half the comedy but the other half was the food like the pupusas your mom's pupusas were delicious i remember Legit. my wife told me bring me some <laughs> like i don't care just bring me some we'll warm them up like the pupusas definitely brought people in <coughs> uh, the comedy was just an extra <laughs> yeah they came for the comedy they stayed for the pupusas for sure they really for did. sure it really did and yeah. the dollar shots your dad was the selling do- <laughs> And then, so it started with the dollar shots, but then people caught on. It's the backyard, so they would bring their own beer. And my mm-hmm. dad got mad. He's like, don't tell them not to bring their beer. You know, I'm not selling any. Well, look, you call the cops. <laughs> yeah. We're not supposed to even be doing this. Exactly. <laughs> Did you ever get in trouble with your neighbors? That they yeah, yeah, they, they, a few times. But the cops would show up, and they were like, they would see that it was comedy. And <coughs> it was uh-huh. pretty, and, pretty tame, and they would be like, just turn it down a little bit. And mm-hmm. yeah, no, no, no major issues. They never shut us down. But yeah, it was it was it was crazy, and wow. so yeah. Now the comedy pupusas and beer. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, the that comedy pupusas and beer is the, the that version 2.0. So it's. But now you're doing it legit. You go to venues. You we go to venues. Food. We bring a, a food vendor. My mom doesn't do it no more because it's too crazy. Yeah, no, I can imagine, bro. Yeah, yeah. We, we hook up with a, a brewery that has beer, and they they sell their beer. Like right now, we have the Bell Show with Border X and Beer Thug Brewery. Uh, one of the Latino-owned breweries in the country, mm-hmm. and uh, and then we bring in a, a pupusera, a pupusero, to to so bend. Do the thing. Yeah, that's fucking dope. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. The energy in these shows is freaking crazy. Do you think the the Salvadorian community was waiting for something like this, and that's why this is so successful? For sure, one hundred percent. Every time I do a show, people are excited. People are like, "Oh, we, you know, this is it. We we're, we're on board." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so it's it's crazy. It's been insane. It, it, see, we I think we all look for that. We all look for the acceptance of of others and say, "Hey, we're we're proud of this." And there's a community that's proud of it too. Wow, I want to go join that community because I want to be part well, of that group. I think. Well, for me, it's a representation, right? We're, we're representing our culture for the longest time. Like being Salvadorian was not accepted, like for. The, for a long time. Oh no, bro, <laughs> dude. It, it, I mean, like, MS came out of necessity of defending themselves because of the abuse from the Chicanos and the American, yeah. like, the Mexican Americans that were here in the U.S. That's that Mexican Salvadorian beef. Yeah. That still some people are like so, don't get it. Like, why are we beefing? Like, <laughs> yeah, th- there is that beef. There is that beef. Now, I'll be honest with you. My beef with Salvadorian people is because my dad was sleeping with a Salvadorian, and that was like the Sancha for my dad. <laughs> and so my mom, that was that 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 was more intimate, guys. I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm going deep on this one but 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 other than that 
that was it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but there's always that stigma. That's there. There was always that beef that ah, you're from El Salvador or you're from Mexico, and and to be called the other thing. Yeah. It's oh a, my God. In in junior high, I remember like kids would be mad at me like, oh, you just don't want to say you're Mexican. I'm like, I'm not Mexican. I'm no Mexican, <laughs> motherfucker. You just don't know fucking geography. Exactly. <laughs> That's not my fault. <laughs> We're like two different countries. No, no. <laughs> That's Mexico, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's... But now, like, doing... So I've been doing, like, these events and bringing community together. We have, like... Some of them, we have, like, vendors, Salvadoran vendors that come in. Yeah. And people are on board, dude. Like, some of these events have been crazy. I think food is a great connector. I think it's a, a great, great, uh, what do you call it, equalizer. For sure. I because think. at the end of the day, we can both agree, a pupusa is delicious. I don't we have care. good food. People will come together. Exactly. <laughs> no, but especially a pupusa. Just the pupusa itself, it's so delicious that even if you hate them, you if you hate oh. Salvadorians, you'll go, man, but those pupusas are so good. <laughs> so you have nothing but to love them. <laughs> it, does, it, does it make sense? Like it, The it, fact it that food sense. creates an equalizer where I hate these goddamn Mexicans, but man, I love Mexican food. Exactly. You, you know exactly. what I mean? That, that mentality. They, they, they meet their own version, Taco Bell. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Do you think we'll ever have that, a, a fast food joint of pupusas, or do, does that already exist? So we've, I've had this conversation. Just doing what I do, I've met restaurant owners, mm -hmm. you know, pupusa vendors and pupusas are such a uh they're complicated to make right if you make yeah. chicharron it's a whole process like people think it's always oh, just you know masa and carne no but it's a whole process to get it prepared the chicharron the revueltas and even cooking them takes time right so like a pupusa will take anywhere from like 10 to 12 minutes sometimes to yes. cook fully and so when you order it's not an instant food and there's a science to like having food ready if you're a vendor like it's a whole thing. So I don't know if it's possible to have like fast food pupusas unless they're like frozen and they just warm it up. But, but then it's, it, not, it's the not the same. Right, right, right. It's not the same. So if, like for good pupusas, it's it's hard. You got to be fresh. See, and you, I it's, you. always <laughs> thought that. I always thought that because it, it is a process, bro. It's, this it's, is not a quesadilla. No, no. It's not something you just throw no. together. No, it's a process. <laughs> it's a process. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there is a science to it. Maybe one day, one day, bro. One day, one day. One day I think, uh, yeah, no. It'll get there. You posted something on your TikTok that I thought it was really interesting. What is your opinion on the Salvadorian president? Oh, dude, it's <laughs> um, it's 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 a it's a necessary evil to get to where we need to get. If that makes sense, like, yeah, it's it's. I know it's hard to it's you know to see all the you know the inmates in in the in the situation they're in, but you gotta remember these guys were terrorizing the country. And if someone didn't do anything, it would it would just rot. Yeah. And so we were there in El Salvador with Nelson uh, back in December. And, um, dude, it is it has changed. We went to, like, the resorts. We, we did, went to the beaches. Oh, I it, saw it, that. It's, I saw that. It's, it, we felt safe. You know, we're traveling the country, you know, foreigners. No, dude, Mexicans. <laughs> Mexicans are going to El Salvador now. It's, so, it's so dude, much, dude, it's so much safer. Look at what's going on in Mexico. We went to El Tunco and we ran into, like, uh, white people, Asian people. It was, like, people from all over the country in a Salvadoran beach. And it, it was crazy. And, like, dude, this is, this is crazy how much change has happened in this country like because he went radical i mean he went as far as to say no more ms anywhere erase it any any cer ceremony i mean any any uh, burial pr plots with the ms were going to be broken down but it's almost like the the approach you know germans took with the nazis right we're you know with the swastika yeah with the swastika yeah. it's like no we're, we're gonna erase that we're we're not about that we're anymore. not about that anymore and yeah. i think it's you know there is there is change and there's visible change now and to be honest that wasn't generated or created in El Salvador MS was created here, here in the streets here. of Los Angeles yeah yeah and they took this this disease <laughs> that is the streets of Los Angeles and they embedded it into the streets of El Salvador yeah. and then it just mass produced like a disease like literally spread. I think it was a combination of things with the corruption to uh, you know government officials and all that stuff and <laughs> it's a combination of things that that happened that you know yes but i'll tell you this because i'll see the downfall in small towns in mexico also because for example you have uh, people that come in from rural areas and of latin america or in mexico and they come to the u.s for a better life and then they get involved in 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 shady 
negotiations, right? And all of a sudden, now they're, they learn how to make meth or how to sell marijuana or they learn the business on how to sell coke or whatever drugs they're, they're dealing with, right? And now they get busted. And what's the next step? <clears throat> Deport them. Deport them where? To their country. This is a criminal. So so criminal, they learn how to become a criminal in the United States. Now, now you're going to send them to the third world country right now, and you're going to unleash that information, that mentality, into a small town that, that doesn't have the resources. That doesn't have the resources to fight this monster that the U.S. just created. Of course he's going to create a gang, and of course he's going to show them how to make meth. Why do we have access to all these chemicals in El Salvador? Because the corruption is there. Exactly. So now I can build an empire off of that. And a lot of people did. A lot of people did. And I think the United States is partly responsible, partly responsible yeah, for yeah. MS, bro. I, totally, <clears throat> totally. And, and as, us as Latinos, Mexican-Americans, we also had a part in that. Like we were discussing that earlier. It grew from the, the fact that they had to defend themselves because they weren't treated like equals or, or they were treated less than because they're not from Mexican descent. Right, right. So I think, you know, we're, we're different, but we're so similar in many ways. And it's like, you know, we have different words, you know, that sound different. And, you know, we speak different. But I think even if you look at Mexico and the different parts of Mexico, different people have different, you know, ways of talking, right? And it's yeah. like... It, dialects. It, dialects, it, it, yeah. And yeah. it's like, well, why are we hating because of the way we talk? <laughs> and and if, in Mexican culture, también hay diferentes. If we can vote, focus on the common enemy, and that is that they don't want us here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The exactly. fact that it doesn't matter. That van is going to be filled with Mexicans and Salvadorians and Guatemalans and Venezuelans and whoever else they did choose to put in that van to throw exactly. back through exactly. that border. So <clears throat> don't don't think you're better than the other person because we're both going to end up in that we're going, van. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you think white people look at us and go, oh, no, they're completely different. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're both the same to me. Yeah. <laughs> cheap labor. That's cheap labor. <laughs> That's it. No. Um, good, man. So I'm, I'm glad now. Do you ever, and I had a few questions, bro. Oh, he's prepared. Because you too. went to El Salvador. Yes. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to ask you, you were born in Compton, California, Martin Luther King Hospital. Yeah, yeah I was raised yeah. in Compton. Yeah. But now you go back to the motherland. Yeah, yeah. Do Salvadorians, um, uh, Salvadorian Americans, are they treated different than nationals that are from salvador salvador do you get some discrimination some pushback from your family members like making fun of you because you don't know how to pronounce certain words or tease you and go i it is some pinche pocho or you're just from america or you're just Te america teasing for sure i think salvadoreños is that's like uh it's embedded in our culture it's almost by you there we're, by we're gonna yeah we're gonna we're gonna like a fool we're just fools by you salvadorian people in general are, are just funny uh -huh. um but, yeah, there is a little bit of that. But this time that we went, uh, didn't feel that way at all. Mm -hmm. uh, felt welcomed. I'll tell you one thing, though. Like, people always say, like, when you're in a foreign country, you stand out. And you try, don't, you know, don't stand out too much. I remember one instance we were with my buddy Nelson, and we're waiting for a car. And he was just kind of standing in the street, like, looking to see if the car is coming. And I'm looking at him like, yeah, he doesn't belong here. Oh, <laughs> just the tell. demeanor. Yeah, you can tell. Like, he does not belong here. Clueless. Like, yeah. oh. And I was like, oh, that's what they mean. Yeah, we yeah, definitely stand yeah, out. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't help that we're big guys. And we're, you know. <laughs> but but the whole thing is I get it because of something me and JT were discussing earlier about our own cousins will talk shit about us. They'll say, ah, pinche primo no sabo. He can't say it. He comes over here like, primo, eh, well, como se dice? <clears throat> quiere primo que, que yo eh, quiere que parque el, la, la, la pica aquí. <laughs> Parquear, no, man, ¿qué, ¿cómo es? ¿Qué es eso? Parquear, cabrón. Estacionar la camioneta. And then they give you shit and they make fun of you. I'm like, no, fuck, I brought you clothes. <laughs> Bro, I, I brought you shoes. Why are you talking shit to me? It is, you know, I'm trying my best here, bro. And, I, and my whole thing is like, I don't fucking make fun of you when you come over here and you but, go to Ross. <laughs> but so that's one of the things like, you know, for us Salvadoreños is owning like, yeah, we're maybe we're born here, but our roots are in El Salvador. You know, both of my parents are Salvadoreños. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to be proud of that culture. It's like, no, you know what? I mean, I was born here, but uh, I'm Salvadorian. That's in my blood. It's in, you know, it's, it's in me. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of, you know, the young, younger generations born here will sometimes say, Oh, my parents are Salvadorian, but I'm, you know, I was born here. Cause it's like that. Now? Feel, yeah. Right like, now. Even like, but I think even like with Mexicans, like, Oh, my best, my parents are Mexican. And I was born here. 
Oh, that they want to acknowledge the fact that they're Mexican. Yeah, because sometimes say. there's that feeling like, oh, well, I'm not really Salvadoran because I wasn't born there. Uh, right? See, there's I that see. hesitance because. Let me tell you guys that think that way. Yes, you're definitely Salvadorian <laughs> yeah, and you're exactly. definitely Mexican, bro. I don't care what side of the border you're from. It's the way you look. Like, look in the mirror. Like, if you look in the mirror and it, and it looks Mexican or Salvadorian, it's probably yes. Mexican or Salvadorian. But my dad was like, no, somos salvadoreños. Like, you know, instill that. Don't, don't, don't deny that part because you are, you know, that's in, it's in your blood. It's, I think it, I think it's important. I think what you're doing is really important in a sense where maybe kids that weren't as proud or didn't find it a, a reason to be proud now can say, oh, now I'm proud. Oh, it's that guy. I. I hear it all the time after the shows and, the, you know, people are like, oh, thank you for what you're doing. Like, you know, or they say like, oh, I haven't heard that word in such a long time. And my grandma used to say that to me or, you know, and it's that, you know, like the oh, yeah. nostalgic feeling yes, that that yeah. brings, bro. Because <laughs> yeah. you have a character. What's his name? An old man. So I do El Tio. That's the, the, Tio. the Tio character. And so at the shows, what I've been doing is like uh, when I was hosting it, I would host it, do my set, uh, bring up all the comics. And then I would close the show as El Tio would come out. And do the whole, like, I had my white hair, I had my guayavera, yeah. and I would roast the crowd in Spanish, uh -huh. the Salvadorian treatment, right? Yeah. Y que feo te has puesto, uy, que gordo, mira. Yeah. Oh, la gran nombre, no jodas. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just go around the crowd and just roast people. It was like the uh, the, the Salvadorian Don Rickles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that is hilarious. And that's how it would close the show. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, it's the, the Theo character has uh, has evolved. <laughs> I, and, I, and I think it, it resonates with a lot of young generation Salvadorians in the U.S. because they go, that's my mom. Yeah, it's all it's, it's my mom. Finally. It's my grandma. It's my dad. You know, it's that nostalgic feeling like, oh, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's exactly how my dad talks. Uh, comedy and pupusas, where did that come from? It was it just something that you decided I I want to do this. It's just, uh, so like uh, the the show. So right after the pandemic, um, I thought people wanted. To, I thought maybe people wanted to laugh because with the political you know stuff that was going on and you know TikTok was kind of blowing up and I thought maybe it's time to bring the show back because the show had been I hadn't done it for a long time. Yeah, and. Um, I remember the first show I had reached out to, to one of the pupuseros, uh, what's that you're cooking? And I said, I have this idea. I want to do an event, you know, and, and do it for free. And uh, I want to see how many people come out, you know, if I promote it on TikTok, promote it on Instagram. And uh, I invited a few comics. I said, hey, this is a free show. I just, you know, I have an idea. Can, let's just see if we can pull it off. And uh, found a brewery. They were open to the idea. They let me use their, their parking lot. 350 people showed up to the show ready to eat and have a good time we rocked the house and i was like okay there there there's something here there's there's a need for it and then we just ran with it we just started finding different venues and diff di different locations and uh yeah started calling it comedy pupusas and beer that's that's what it is right it's so there is a song to this. Oh, yeah, dude, it is. Crooked Stilo? It has become... It, it, I mean, there is a theme song to there's this. There's a theme song for yeah. Comedy Pupus and Beer with <laughs> one of, like, the top Salvadorian recording artists. Crooked Stilo. <laughs> Crooked Stilo. They've been around forever. Bro, I've known them forever. Uh, those guys are legit. Dude. Those guys are, are awesome. So, funny thing, like, so I started doing the Theo character on TikTok as a voiceover. Yeah. I wasn't even, I wasn't, wouldn't show myself, it was just a voice. Mm -hmm. And people would just thought it was someone else. I would, and then I started saying, oh, it's my uncle. And then I used the filter to make me look old. And I would splice the videos of me talking to myself with yeah. the filter. And so people believed there was a, a different person. And so Crooked Stilo uh, had their new song coming out, La Bala. And they're like, oh, we want El Tio in the video. And I'm like, oh, but it's a, it's a filter. Like, <laughs> I don't know how that we would pull that off. And the director, Raimundo Archila, he goes, well, let's try to figure something out. Maybe we'll do prosthetics or something. And uh, I go, let me, let's try something. And I have curly hair. So I let my hair out and I did the, 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 the hairspray, spray, the white hairspray. We put on some glasses, a guayavera, some shorts, some Crocs. And we tried some test video and we sent it to, to Victor from Crickstilo. 
He was that's it. That's it. That's the character. Yeah. And from then on, that was the character. So you be, you have become Don Don Cheto Don of the Sador, <laughs> yeah, Salvadorian Don community. Cheto. The Salvadorian Don Cheto. Por qué ni tanto a ti? Por el tío. But it was so funny how many people are like really bought into the idea. Oh, that's that's his uncle. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, oh, where's yeah, your uncle? Yeah. Is your uncle coming? <laughs> No, he's not coming. No, today. he charges too much. We yeah. couldn't bring him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah, once we did that with Kirk Castillo, we met and we just kind of clicked. Mm-hmm. They remind me of my, my primos and, you know, we're l- around the same age and those guys are legit. Yeah. And uh, I had pitched them the idea of the song and they were like, dude, let, I got something. And he, yeah, yeah. he did it and now we play it at the shows. And <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a legit no, and it's, they've been, Crooked Steel has been in the scene for years. Oh, man. yeah, yeah. They were part of that new wave when Aquit first hit the scene in the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Univision Music was signing just truckloads of, of artists. And and they would stand the entire time. Like, they're still playing. They're still relevant. They're still out there performing. And they're still representing the Salvadorian yes, background. 100%. But you know why they stood out, though? And that's why I make it a point that I've known them for years. When we were doing LA TV and I was the warm-up guy, I would see them come in, and they were the only rap group that would re- represent El Salvador. Out of all the other rappers, everybody was Azteca, and everybody was like the, the David Rolas and all these other guys and Aqua, but they were all American. Yeah. I mean, they were the Mexican American. This guys came in. They were representing El Salvador. Yeah, yeah. since they came in. So, yeah, dude, I remember watching. Like, oh, is that Crooked Steela doing the fucking comedy of beer? <laughs> yeah, man, those guys, <coughs> those guys are <coughs> legit and they're super cool. And we've done different projects with them. And yeah, no, they're now since the success of of, of your TikTok and everything you've been doing, like things that you never thought you would do that you're doing now. Oh, I, I, I pinch myself all the time. Like, what? But what? what, <laughs> what give me, give me two of those moments where you're like, oh shit, I can't believe I was doing this. So, so even the 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 Salvador trip was. We were there for a movie. We got cast in a movie with with Nelson. Okay. And so we had a small part uh, in a movie, and we were there for a movie in El Salvador. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Well, how do we end up here? <laughs> you know. So many crazy instances like that. Like again, Crooked Stilo song. Like yeah, to me, like you know, I grew up with those guys listening yeah, to listen like, to like, other <laughs> CD. It's it's been an amazing journey. Nelson Chavez Nelson is he is was he a comedian in Mexico? No, no. So he 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 was born here. He lived in South Central. He moved to France. He lived in France for a long time, and then he started doing comedy in France. And he was just kind of getting started in France. He would do videos. And then uh, a lot of the sites that were sharing my videos would share his videos. And so I kind of like started seeing, oh, who's, who's this guy? And I started following him and then he had started following me. Um, he had seen my uh, the YouTube video, one of the older YouTube videos with my Salvadorian bit. Um, I had got a bunch of views a long time ago. That video was like 12 mm-hmm. years old. And like that video every year, somebody will find it and share it. And he had seen that video. So he, he had started following me. And so he knew who I was. I didn't know who he was. And then um, the project with Crooked Estilo, La Bala, he got cast in the same video. And so that's the first time we met. And since then, we, we hit it now off. Now, does he live here now? Yeah, yeah. So he's back now. So he was living in Puerto Rico not too long ago. And then uh, with this tour, I said, hey, man, if you're thinking about coming back, this is the, this is the time. The time. So now he hosts for me the comedy booth and beer, and then I headline the show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's so, great, dude. Yeah. So. Now, do you guys do it in Spanish also? No, so it's 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 Spanglish. So like he does some jokes in Spanish, he does a joke in French. Uh and but no, it's mostly English. And so it's a, it's a show for everybody. Uh-huh. Uh but we do throw some Spanish in there. And then when I do the Theo character, that's all in Spanish. Would you consider going to El Salvador and doing a tour out there? Oh, I would love to. I don't know if I have a whole I think if Theo in El Salvador with the whole set, that'd be kinda interesting to see <laughs> and now now the reason i ask because the way it works in mexico is you know tienes que pedir permiso like who who runs the town oh right, right. the cartel's gonna want their cut <laughs> yeah. and then there's so much corruption in it you gotta rub so many like you're gonna grease up so many wheels that if you're not well connected you're not doing it's not show. gonna happen it's you know not, I mean? yeah exactly so is that something that you can be fearful in, in El Salvador if you decide, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to El Salvador and do some shows, or would you think that that's not a problem? 
Um, it's probably not even me. Like, oh yeah, we can do a show, but yeah, it's probably there's probably a lot of politics involved. In, you think so? In trying to do a show, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's one of the things that that you, and my manager, was like, nah, dude, I'm I'm out. You want to produce your shows in Mexico? Go use a producer <laughs> in Mexico. <laughs> so literally, if I want to produce something in Mexico, I would use a producer in Mexico that already knows what's going on, and he would just tell me a flat fee. And yeah. He says, "This is how much it's going to cost for you to do a show." That would probably be the the route I would have to take and figure out, like somebody who's already doing it who knows. You know, yeah. oh, this is how it's going to go down. But for me to just say, oh, I'll do a show, I think that would be crazy. Yeah, because <laughs> even the dynamics of getting your taxes, like when you do the show in Mexico, the people that are there to collect the taxes are there at the show. Oh, wow. Oh, IRS <laughs> is waiting when the show is at like, the okay. Door. Yeah, and they take their cut right there from the it's door. Empty briefcase. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> yes, bro. That's how it works. That's how I'm like, oh. Oh, man. I'm very standoffish when it comes to Mexico. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I want to do a Spanish comedy here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Family. I want to talk about your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a married man. I'm a married man. Yeah, I have three kids. Three kids. Yeah. What, tell me, what are boys, girls? I have one boy and two girls. One boy and two girls? Yeah. How yeah. old are they? So we have a 10-year-old. My son just turned nine. And we have a, a two-year-old. So we had a pandemic baby. Okay. Yeah, of course. You have to have a pandemic <laughs> baby. <laughs> what pandemic, the fuck are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The joke is that her name is Pandemia Quarantina Via La Corona. <laughs> 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 that's a namer for the time you know <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i like how people have to show like Did you really name your daughter that yes Did you? yes yes that's her name yes, that's yes. Their name. look her up google her. yeah google her um and your wife what does she think of all the success now oh uh, she's my wife is super supportive she anything i want to do like you know she's there um and now she like helps me run the shows and like she's in charge of like tickets and stuff like that so it's a collaborative effort yeah yeah, yeah. She's, okay yeah even like you know, being out of town and doing that stuff, she's home with the kids. And so, does this mean you're good now? I mean, is this all you're doing full this time? Is all I'm doing full time right now. That is fucking cool, <laughs> that's, dude. That's that it. is We're fucking <laughs> great, bro. The fact that you get to do a great job, you make people laugh, and still represent your country yeah. in a sense and put them in a in a in a, in a positive light. That Meaning, is that is the goal is to to represent the culture. In a positive way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Something different that it's not MS if it's not something else. E even the curse words, like, on videos, I didn't use, like, the traditional Salvadoran curse words. I noticed right now. Yeah. And in, in the stand-up, it, it, I break it down, and I, use, I explain them. Uh, but in the videos, I try not to because it's, you know. Well, you can explain them here. Explain it to me. <laughs> how, does, how does this work? Explain. explain. So the the, 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 the the I translate the Salvadoran bad words so that people don't understand so the people in the where crowd where it's coming yeah from, what, right? what, is what it, it really yeah. means like son of the greatest bitch so how, to explain that to me explain it to me. hijo de la gran puta okay so the joke is that i grew up thinking i was the son of the greatest bitch because all i heard at home was hijo de la gran puta <laughs> now did you ever think man there's other putas out there that don't match up to where my mom is at right now <laughs> yeah, for sure <laughs> for sure mine is la gran puta yeah la más grande de todas <laughs> Also, the, like the word cerote, like I play around with that. And, cerote, and what does that mean, cerote? So cerote means turd, turd right? Yes. Cerote, like a piece yeah. of turd. So in the, the bit, I explained that, you know, people have gotten it wrong for years. It's not cerote, it's cero tres. Cero tres. And I say, yeah, it's a Nahuatl, it's an ancient Nahuatl word that just got mistranslated. You know, it means turd, it means third in English. Uh -huh. And people just started using turd. And so people have gotten it wrong all these years. It's yeah. not turd, it's the third. Because we got to jump to three borders to get here. <laughs> oh, see that that makes fucking total sense. Yeah, so I break it down. So I'm trying to break down the, the what said what they mean. Yeah, so <laughs> there you go. When they got here, you were trying to say third. I was the third. I was the third. The yeah, we're, yeah, we're not third. We're the third. So I think they're, 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 they they misunderstood and said they're serotes. They're serotes. <laughs> exactly. And I always uh, the other thing is like serotes, like the Salvadorian N word, right? Because if you're Salvadorian, you use it all the time. But if you're not Salvadorian. You is, it watch out. is it offensive for sure yeah, yeah. Oh, really it's like the n-word so if yeah. if somebody else from another race says hey cerote oh yeah so oh, it's yeah. on it, yeah it'll people will take it the wrong way because it you know it just it comes off stronger than if your mom's you know is saying it mm -hmm. and so you know or your pops is saying it and yeah it, it, it definitely has a, a different tone to the point where we're going to blows? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for oh, sure. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, right? and so I try to explain that to people. Like, yeah, it's it's not a word you just throw around. Uh -huh. You know, obviously you hear Salvadorians use it all the time. Uh -huh. But if you're not Salvadorian, uh -huh. you might run into trouble. <laughs> oh, 
Oh shit! Yeah, that, yeah, that man. is true, bro. That yeah. that that is true. I never saw it that way. So so that in the stand up, you know, I do that to the curse word. I use them, but I'm trying to explain to. Now, do your kids like? Do, do you use they curse? curse? No, do they, they don't say curse. Cerote? No, no, they no. don't curse at all. No, but they're too they, young. Do they hear you guys curse at each other? Do you? So curse? at home, like my wife and I, we don't we don't really curse. It's not like nobody curses. Yeah, but so it's funny. Like uh, my parents weren't like big on the curse. My uncles were. Yeah, my uncles would throw <laughs> all we the Salvadorian. The videos. We already saw the videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my dad and my mom weren't aren't like aren't like that. Yeah, they're super. You know, mm-hmm. they're different, um, but still salvy. And, uh, yeah, no, my kids don't curse. They're too young. They don't. <laughs> yeah. Now, but see, like, I see your dad and I saw your mom. I met them. They seem like a very stable family. Like, you come from a very loving home. Like oh, yeah, yeah. No, was my good. parents are good. Like I said, my parents are super supportive. Anything I want to do, they've been on board, you know, from day one. If it's, you know. Yeah, like, I don't I don't see you having, like, my fucking story or other fucking millions of other immigrant stories are like, yeah, my dad's a bitch. He was a drunk. He peaked the shit out of me. Well, like, there were some episodes. My dad, you know, went through a lot of stuff. Um, but they've been good for, for many years now. My dad had, he, he would drink for... For many years, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so one day he just said, "I'm done." Yeah, when it was it was crazy. So our the, the story is like, so we grew up in Compton. We we lived together with my aunt. It was one house for, with like 15 people. Yeah, of course. And uh, I was I think my dad suffered from depression, but Latinos were not going to talk about you know our depression. And so when we moved out and we got the house that they're in now, the Linwood house, things changed for him. Like it was it was crazy. It was a complete you know. 180 and like well he's, it he's, gave him purpose do you understand yeah it gave him purpose yeah it <laughs> definitely did he he found himself now with something to to keep up to, yeah, to work to, for to live for and it was funny for <coughs> so i remember coming home one day uh to my parents house and my dad was gardening yeah in the middle of the afternoon i'm like what is he doing like he <laughs> gardening and he just quit cold turkey like he didn't go through steps or nothing but something just clicked in him and he was a different person. Well, because he found that was something there to lose. Yeah. Do you yeah, understand? Yeah, yeah. I think once you find that value, it's the same reason I won't cheat. Because I find something very valuable. Like yeah, my daughter that I don't want to miss. Well, so. When you have family, that, 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 you know, that changes things. And it's like you're losing a lot. If you're you're willing to risk all that for that, nah. <laughs> exactly. It's, so, But I'm, I'm glad. So your dad did. Find himself yeah, more yeah. finding a purpose in life and saying, "Shit, this for is sure, something yeah. hard. This is something worth working hard for." And then even our relationship changed from that point. You know, we're how old were you when that happened? Oh man, we had already moved, so I think I was in my twenties. Yeah, when this in your twenties. So, yeah. so through your childhood, he was yeah, drinking. yeah, through like high school time. Yeah, he was yeah, he was oh, going okay. through some rough stuff. Yeah, so this is when something that happened. Like, for example, he well, wasn't a drunk. Well, yeah, I'm like, 40 now. So when he was five, you know what I mean? No, when you were five and then he got over it. No, this is something you lived through that. Yeah, yeah, him. yeah, yeah, for sure. You know what? And it's something I tell my, my, my friends all the time. My dad was such an asshole and a monster, but at the same time, such a responsible person. In, in a sense where this <laughs> motherfucker, I've never, I've never lived in an apartment building. I never lived with anybody I lived in my own house. He, he was so so prideful when it came to that. Like my family, I take care of my family. Like everything was taken care of. We didn't have luxuries, but we also didn't need anything. But he was also an asshole. <laughs> Do you understand? So so uh, uh, that's why I'm asking these questions because he, I don't know how big of a monster your dad was he because was, he seems like a really nice guy now. No, so he wasn't a monster. He was just like on the weekends. We, he, he was always there. We would go out to eat. We would go do stuff. But it was like the weekdays, like he would go to work and just go drink and then not come home for like till late. Right. And then that would make my mom mad and, and stuff and like the that. the trouble. Here comes and the trouble. Then, yeah. But on the weekends, he would be home and, uh-huh. you know, it was like a, a regular day. And then eventually started drinking at night and, you know, and then he kind of just shut off, shut off. Yeah. Now, I think it's different. I was discussing this with my wife the other day. Our parents... Like, even even my dad generation was, like, in Mexico, they have a budget for, like, hookers. 
Like this is for hookers. <laughs> like, hook your this is for the rent. This is for the bills. This is for the gas. This is for the kids. This is for the hookers. Like he, they split up their check. <laughs> para las cariñosas. Para, you know what I mean? <laughs> they, yeah, they, they used to do that. It was a, a known thing. It's, the, the gumaras. You know what I mean? The Italians, they go out with the gumara on Friday and take the wife out on Saturday. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was a thing like that. And now this generation, I tell my wife, be so lucky that we live this generation. We're I don't different. have a little gumara on the side. Like I have, I have half brothers my age. You know what I mean? so, so it was, it was different times. But I tell them like, because I, I see you more like your dad, like a, a family guy that stays home, chills. Yeah, for sure. Like I, I, I do what I got to do, and then I come home. I'm, uh, I don't. When I'm home, I'm home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, What's next? What's next for you? Oh what man, you, what, what do you want to do ultimately? Ultimately, where do you want to take all of this? Because I, I love what you're doing. I love the project. I love the whole thank, movement. Thank you, I love the representation. I, I hope more people gravitate to it and embrace it as a as a as a good thing. But where do you see this? Where do you want to take this? Uh, I, I as far as it can go, man. Uh, I want the stand up. The stand up that I'm working on. I want that uh, eventually to come out right and 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 have people see it. Right now, it's just the shows. I don't even put content on my stand-up because I'm keeping it, like, for the live shows. I want you to come see it. I want you to, mm-hmm. to hear it. Uh, eventually, I want that out, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we got a couple projects that we're working on, and I want people, you know, uh, beyond the TikToks and the Instagram to see it and, and mm-hmm. hopefully get to that point. So take it as far as we go, man. So I'm talking to, these, uh, to this Eddie, this uh, gentleman that's out there, patrolling street vendors and making oh, sure that uh, they don't get abused. Is it the, uh, Mora? Is that Eddie? Something like that. Eddie, Eddie, something like that. Yeah. He's out there and protecting street vendors. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and that affects you guys. It affects everybody yeah. in the Latin community. Any immigrant that's coming into this country to make a buck, that's a we, street we, vendor. We did a video with Nelson. So I, I was driving uh, down to 110 and I saw this sign. It was a raggedy sign with the spray paint. It said pupusas. Mm-hmm. Like she just got a rag spray painted pupusas on it, and she was selling pupusas. Yes, and uh, just the street vendor. And I would drive by and I saw it, and then I told my wife, like, I wanna, I wanna buy her a banner. Banner's like twenty, thirty bucks, right? But I just wanted it to be legit. Like she's, she's hustling. Yeah. And so I told Nelson the idea. I was like, oh, let's let's go check her out. Let's try her pupusas. I ordered the banners from Amazon. They have uh, banners just ready. We went to go try her pupusas. We're kind of talking to her. Turns out she's Mexican. Selling pupusas. <laughs> yeah. Yo, talk about cultural appropriation. Dude. That's right. We're taking she, it over. <laughs> her story was, so during the pandemic, she lost her job, couldn't do nothing. She was married to a Salvadorian guy. Uh-huh. So she had learned to make pupusas. And so when she lost her job, she said, well, I'm just going to sell pupusas because I know how to make them. And she just posted up, did her sign. She didn't, yeah. you know, she doesn't have children. She doesn't have anybody helping her. She just did her thing. And she was yeah. out there just selling pupusas. And so we, we 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 gave her the banners, we hooked her up, and, yeah. and we bought some pupusas, and they were legit pupusas. They were legit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just because they're on the side of the road doesn't mean they're not legit. <laughs> no, <laughs> dude. <laughs> and I I just loved her story. Like she turned out not to be Salvadoran, Mexican lady selling yes. pupusas. I was like, I love it. I yeah. love it. That's a, that you can even write that up. There's a, yeah. I, I'm gonna ask the lady because there's a lady that sells tamales here at the corner of my street here on on, on uh, Randolph. And she's always there early in the morning because I go out and... Selling and her order, tamales. Selling tamales. I'm going to ask her. She's going to be like, oh, I'm Salvadorian. Yeah. <laughs> what the f- There's <laughs> always somebody hungry to feed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I'm glad somebody's actually taking care of those street vendors, bro. I'm glad that yeah, this no, guy's I, it's, doing what he's doing. But that, that's good, man. Um, do you ever think Theo's ever going to do a movie? Is he really going to go the Don Cheto route? Are you going to make an album with Theo? I would, I would love to. <laughs> I think the, the idea of the Theo, so he, it's so with stand up, right? You, mm-hmm. you, it, you, you, you take years to develop your act and whatnot. And I think El Theo as a comedy character, it's in its infancy, mm-hmm. and I'm trying new things with it. You know, exploring where where it's going. Now, is uh, Theo married? So, the running joke, and I'll, I'll tell you, give you the backstory and the running joke. The running joke on the videos is that it's always like, y tu tía que anda haciendo aquí, mm-hmm. right? But you never see the tía. It's always like, uh, I think one of them was like a, a frame of a cow, uh-huh. right? And so it's like, y tu tía que anda haciendo aquí. Uh-huh. Whatever the most random thing is, right, that there's a tía joke. 
And so we never see the tia, but we have uh -huh. a tia. So he's married, but we don't know who to who. Uh -huh. And so I think at one point it, uh, I had put a picture out with him and Sofia Vergara, and that was the tia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I saw one, and <laughs> you went to the Capitol building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I know Wendy Carrillo. That was it, so fun. Oh, dude, you went like, ¿Y tu tía qué está haciendo aquí? And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I can't believe I saw her. It was so funny that day because I was at the Capitol. I didn't know she was there. Okay, by the way, people don't know who Wendy Carrillo is. Wendy Carrillo is Assemblywoman. She represents the East LA. Yeah. Salvadorian. So from El Salvador. Yes. Came in the guerrilla when the guerrilla yes. was going on. And and she now represents a section of LA. Yes. Yeah, she is. She's, and she's, she's up there, man. We've been following each other. Uh, and it was so funny. I was there for something else. And uh, I was shooting content. I thought, okay, I'm going to do a deal in the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And it... Just so happened to run into her. I was like, oh, hold on. Hold on. I need you to wave. I have an idea. I didn't uh, even tell her. It was like, uh, and we recorded it. And uh, yeah, it was, it just, it just happened. But it's so great. You, out of all the people you could have ran into, <laughs> exactly. you ran into the Salvadorian that represents East LA. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I was like, oh man, what are the chances? Like, right. it's just so crazy. But, but I'm glad, bro. I'm glad. Um, any negative stuff that you've heard? Do you still see ignorance online? Oh, oh yeah. Do for you get sure. hate? For sure, for sure, for sure. Um, the, both ways. Like, uh, there's with the butaco. Mm -hmm. that, that one at first was controversial. Like, Salvadorians who are like, you know. Explain uh, to people what a butaco is. So, it's a pupusa taco. Uh -huh. And it's a, uh, these. so it's been around. Like, I've seen other restaurants do it. Um, I've seen other people call it different names. Uh, like, the one in L.A., the downtown, they call it La Mexicana. Okay. And so it's a pupusa Mexican style. Okay. And so it's been around, but these guys in San Francisco, uh, Los Bayuncos, named it Putaco. And to me, I thought that was hilarious. Putaco, that's right? Yeah. Putacos. Putacos. It just sounds great. like a yeah. bad word. Yeah. And so I did the video with them. And uh, when I did the first video, it blew up. And I got both. It was like people like, oh, what are you doing? You're ruining the pupusa. And then there was people like, oh, putaco, hell yeah. That's, I want one. Yeah, I want one too, but bro. The, yeah, <laughs> it was the, the hate from the, you know, the the purest salvadoreños. That's not a pupusa. You're ruining the culture. El, cordu, el cortido, ¿dónde va? <laughs> yeah, ¿Dónde yeah, le echas el cortido? <laughs> and so stuff like that, like, you know, it's just so funny. And then, like, I did a second video uh, with the Chente song, Si No Me Quieres, Pues Ni Modo. Uh -huh. And that was it. Like, Si No Me Quieres, Ni Modo. Uh -huh. And so it showed the pupusa. Uh -huh. I showed the meat. And then at the end, it says putaco. Uh -huh. And that video went crazy viral. I'm talking like, I think we stopped counting at 10 million and yeah. people duetting it and people sharing it. And now restaurants all over the country sell putacos. Yeah. We just got it became an actual thing. Yes. And now in Australia, there's a place calling it putacos. <laughs> it's like everywhere people are now calling it putacos. Yes. And it's like, but, what the hell? But we that's great though. It's great. And it looks delicious. Honestly, as a as a as a fat guy myself. Oh, bro, dude, it is how does it, it, it taste? Legit. It's legit. So if you they so they do a, a, a revuelta with carne on top. So revuelta is pork, right? Yeah. Uh, beans and cheese. Yes. And then you add your carne of choice. Now, is it a thinner pupusa or they keep the same consistency? Same consistency. Things? They do them a little bit smaller, so like on taco size, right? Oh, uh, okay. Because okay. it's easier to hold. If you get a big one, it's just, just going to make a mess. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're a little bit smaller. But, yeah, and they, they have a cheese one, that, but they do the revuelta. So it's like loaded with meat. It's hefty. It's it's a... Yeah. It, it, oh, shit, yeah. bro. It, it's legit, dude. No. God damn, bro. Like, how does... You know what I mean? Like, there's some some high motherfucker somewhere got oh. high and said, <laughs> hey, bro, what do we got? We got pupusas and leftover meat from the taquero. All right, bro. We're getting putazo. So they were doing it for a long time. They used to call it tacusas. Tacusas. And, okay. But when they changed it to putacos, that just changed the game. And then I come in and do viral videos, and it just, mm. it just blew up. Like, now it's just crazy. Let me ask you something. It's... In terms of Salvadorians, is there a hierarchy in the, in terms of Latin America? Meaning, is there Mexico, Guatemalan, Salvadorian, Ecuadorians? Have you ever heard of this? Almost like Asians have Japanese, Chinese, uh, Korean, and they go back through the Asians of, of, of like the hierarchy, like who's of Central American hierarchy. <laughs> yeah, like have you ever heard of this? No, or no, no. Or this is just me. <laughs> I haven't, JT, this is new. This is new. JT, uh, have you heard of this? Like Japanese people will say, "Oh, Japanese number That's one," the and then this Chinese. Uh, I've heard of it, but not like 
Not for like Hispanics or Latinos. No, but that's why I'm asking Latino. that question. I've never, I didn't, I've never. I think in LA there's a, there's Mexicans and there's uh, Salvadorians. <laughs> yeah, just be, and I think that's because of the numbers. Yeah, yeah, you know for I mean? sure. Just in the fact that the, just the numbers are just we've been here longer. Yeah, yeah, than El Salvador, but the only reason that the, they didn't cross the border, the border crossed. The yeah, like we were already here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, but but it, in this in the sense of the hierarchy, because I know that in Latin America. When I was in Mexico, everybody was tr trying to get to Mexico. Meaning, if I speak Spanish and I'm in the entertainment business, Mexico is the goal. Meaning, if I make it in Mexico, I'll make it everywhere make through it. Latin America. Like, oh, okay. everybody's going to consume my content. Meaning, Ricardo Arjona from Guatemala yeah. didn't make it till he still till he got to Mexico. And then he became a big hit. Uh, he, a bunch of these artists... Basically, come to Mexico, they conquer Mexico, and then Latin America just follows suit and, and goes, just, done. Does that happen? Do you know of any of that? No, no. I, I, no? I, yeah. No. Oh, it's okay. new to me, so now uh, I have to uh, research it. Now you're, yeah. it. I thought you would know, too, that <laughs> the, the hierarchies on that stuff. But, um, bro, I'm excited. I get to see you do stand-up because we're leaving from here. We're, yeah, we're about yeah, to yeah, wrap yeah, this yeah, thing yeah. up. We're going to go to the improv. I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to congratulate you, first thank of you, all, on you, all man. your hard work. Uh, you deserve it. Thank you. Uh, thank keep you. being a great father. I see that also too. That you're taking care of your kids. You're right there, bro. They're, they sure. are. They are my uh, pride and joy, man. Yeah. Things things flip for me when I had kids, and it's like it's a whole different perspective. You did take a step back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. took a step back once you got married. You had, I got kids. Married, I had kids. I saw you because I didn't see you at the clubs anymore. Yeah, I know. It was it was a different energy. Like I wanted to be home, right? Yeah. You go to clubs and you go hang out and you're there all night. And it's like, no, I wanted to, to be home. So I would do gigs and I would leave right away. Or I would, if for a long time, uh, uh, um, Satina, Sebastian Satina was the only one keeping me busy, yeah. booking me places. And yeah. I would bounce. Like I would go do it and then bounce. And uh, go home. Yeah, and go home. Yeah, you're going to go to yeah. your kids. You're going to go to your wife. I get it. And let me tell you something. Word advice. I've been doing it for 22 years. And... Um, I don't regret any any gig that I ever had to cancel to be with my little girl or my family. So keep doing that. I mean, and more success is coming. You're going to be very overwhelmed with success and, and a lot of things to do. But keep that in mind. At the end of the day, bro, everybody that's commenting on your page, everybody says they're your fans, everybody that's praising you at the end of the day, they're not going to be there like your family's going to be there. Oh, for sure. And yeah. you will trade. You would be willing to trade all your success and all your money just to have a relationship with your kids. You and will be there if you don't listen to what I'm telling you. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I, I understand. And I, yeah, I, I'm telling you, when, when the kids are born, it's a whole different perspective. Yeah. yeah it's, it, now it's, it's about them, really. Like, you know, even, you know, we were talking about our wife. Like, our time is not our time. It's their time, right? So we do things for them. Yes. We don't do things for us. We do for things the, for them. For them. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah, To engage with them, to to let them know we care, we're there, we're present, we're listening, and all that stuff. Exactly. Those, that's just you putting things in the bank account. Do you understand? Your kids are going to appreciate that. And I'm telling you this because I want you to understand that's the only real, true, genuine love. Fuck the fake, fuck bullshit and TikTok and Instagram. Oh, yeah, the, the fuck all this nothing. garbage. That means nothing, bro. Those kids, that's unconditional love. You understand? Yeah. Your kids will love you as long as you're a good person. As yeah. long as they will always love you. So keep it up, bro. Thank I you very much for coming. You, and right now, we're going to hit up at the Ontario let's Improv. Let's go, babe. Let's wanna, go. Let's do this. Woo! Well, thank you very much for yes, joining uh, us, bro. Was... And uh, guys, what a great interview. Bro. I love thank talking you, to you, catching up, bro. This was cool, man. This yeah. is super chill. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. I we forgot that we had Mike. Do you want to promote <laughs> anything, bro, before we leave? I want to make sure that we promote uh, anything. Comedy with Bustles and Beer. Go to Jose.live for the tour dates. Yes, uh, one on the 25th here in L.A., guys. So yeah, in Be so Bellflower? In Be no, in Bell, the city Bell. of Bell, and then we, we go to Vegas. And then you go to yeah, Vegas. Yeah. There you go. So thank you very much for joining us. My name is Richard Villa, JC. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everybody. Ahí estamos.